Welcome to our next video within SEMA F3 financial strategy paper. This video will be devoted to the distinction between free cash flows to capital providers and free cash flows to equity. Now, in order to determine the value of the project or later on, as you will see, the value of the company, um, one of the methods, probably one of the most commonly used methods, is the discounted cash flows method. We talked a little bit about the discount rate already. We said it will be the weighted average cost of capital in most cases. Now we need to talk about which cash flows should be discounted. The cash flows to be discounted are the free cash flows. The cash flows that are left at the end of the day, the revenues collected minus costs incurred. However, even then, you can take two approaches to those cash flows. The first one is free cash flows to capital providers. If you look at those, you will look at effectively the cash flows that the project or the company generates, just the pure revenues collected, minus costs actually paid, and minus all necessary capital expenditures within the project and working capital movements, so increases in inventory levels or reductions in inventory levels at the end of the project as a result of releasing the unnecessary inventory at the end. Now, all the cash flows you will be discussing are here for the purpose of these notes called relevant cash flows. You should know what it means from your earlier studies. It's obviously everything about eliminating non-cash items. You don't take those into account. You don't take into account any sunk cash flows, something you have to do either way, whether you go on with the project or not. You don't take into account allocated costs of other operations that were allocated to this particular project that you're trying to evaluate. Now, one important thing to consider when you do the free cash flows analysis is the role of inflation. And for the exam purpose, you should never get it wrong. In the majority of cases, unless the question says otherwise, you actually use the nominal rate of interest. So the discounting is done at nominal rate when or then cash flows should also be taken at nominal values. Nominal means taking inflation into account. Now normally, intuitively, we would do it anyway. So when you're evaluating your cash flows in T0, T1, T2, and you think inflation will be 3% in each of those years. And if you think in today's money you will make 1 million a year, then in nominal terms, 
in year one you should do one million thirty and in year two well a little bit more than one million sixty that's nominal that's taking into account the inflation and I told you this is how you normally do it because then you have to discount it at nominal rate now if you discount using obviously the weighted average cost of capital but for the weighted cost of capital you take the risk-free rate as published all right that will usually be published at the nominal rate right. the interest rates which you can find on the web the interest rates which you can find in the newspapers are always nominal they take into account inflation if you can buy bonds with a yield of 10 percent that obviously includes the inflation for a given currency thus as I say if you have a nominal rate and in most cases unless the question says something else you will have a nominal rate then you have to use nominal cash flows cash flows include the inflation on the other hand if your rate for some reason is real then you should use real cash flows or the other way around if the question gives you real cash flows then you should use a real rate now how to get to the real rate now here's the formula the nominal rate is always the real rate multiplied by the rate of inflation so you can derive real rate from that All right that's what you would do if you need a real rate now using nominal rate has also one big advantage uh, various categories of your costs and revenues may be subject to different rate of price increases so for example you may assume that your costs will fluctuate with the general inflation in the country but your revenues cannot be increased at that pace so you would apply a different inflation rate to your nominal cash flows on revenues and on expenses and that's a huge advantage in the calculation now obviously the next thing to consider is the taxation cash flows and the taxation as you probably remember from uh, your previous studies it needs to be taken into account in the following way um, you want to calculate tax on operating cash flows because in most jurisdictions tax is actually paid more on cash flows than profits and uh, then you just need to take into consideration one tiny thing the tax deductible depreciation it exists but it's not taken into account in your analysis of cash flows obviously you only take cash items to your discounted cash flows analysis yet tax cash flow is reduced by tax deductible depreciation which is called written down allowances and now one important split free cash flows to equity versus free cash flows to capital providers now what we've been discussing just recently was this concept free cash flows to capital providers that is exactly revenues minus costs investments tax 
and the working capital movements. That's free cash flows to capital providers. Why is it called capital providers? Well, because it's both equity and debt providers. Right? In this case, we're calculating the net present value for both of these uh, capital providers. And that's how you usually do it. However, sometimes you may use an alternative method, which is called free cash flows to equity. All right. Uh, in which case you will exclude in your cash flow analysis or, or include in your cash flow analysis all the effects of payments to debt providers. So you will have cash flows as previously. However, from those cash flows you will deduct interest payments, repayments of debt, and potentially you will add new debt raised. Still, well, debt. And if you deduct that, you will be left with cash flows belonging to equity holders only. And if you have that, the only thing that will change is the discount rate. In the previous case, free cash flows to capital providers well, obviously will be discounted at weighted average cost of capital because it's both debt and equity. Now, free cash flows to equity holders, as you can imagine, will be discounted at cost of equity only. 